Hi, I'm Mr. Cass at Middle School, and you're watching West Virginia History in two minutes or less. Today we're going to be talking about quite the crazy story, the story of Mary Ingalls and how she was taken by the Shawnee and then made her way back home. Here we go. Most people have probably heard about the story of Mary Ingalls from the book Fall of the River. Mary Draper and William Ingalls married when she was 18 in 1750, and they settled in Draper's Meadow in Augusta County, Virginia. Today that's Blacksburg, Virginia, which is the site of Virginia Tech University. Things had been peaceful between them and the Shawnee from Ohio, but when the French and Indian War started, things turned sour on July 8, 1755. The Shawnee raided Draper's Meadow. Mary and two of her sons, Thomas and George, were among those who were taken. Her husband was not there during the attacks. Some were killed. Three days after being captured, Mary gave birth to her daughter. With a new baby and a broken arm, she was still able to hold on to her baby with her good arm and continue traveling the very next day. They followed parts of what is now the turnpike to the Cabin Creek area. When they were close to the mouth of Campbell's Creek, they stopped to feast on animals that were feeding on salt licks. Mary and the other captives were now taught how to make salt. They followed the Kanawha and then the Ohio to the capital at the mouth of the Scioto River. Both of Mary's sons were sent away to other parts of Ohio and the Detroit area. A few weeks later, while at Big Bone Lick in Northern Kentucky making salt, she made a decision to plan her escape and ask another captive if she would like to come along as well. Mary made the decision to leave her newborn behind because she would cry and get them captured or would likely not survive the escape back home. Natives searched for them for a day or so but then gave up. Days later, they took a horse and some corn from an Indian village near Portsmouth. When they arrived at the Big Sandy, they found a lodgment of driftwood to cross with the horse, but its leg broke and they had to abandon it while crossing. After moving up and down the streams to find easy places to cross, the old Dutch woman blamed Mary for convincing her to leave. She even tried to attack Mary, but she was able to keep her back. As the weather got colder, things got rough for both of them. They survived eating pawpaws, black walnuts, and even digging up roots. They traveled over 800 miles in 40 days, mainly following the New River through West Virginia, arriving home in early December. Mary had five more children. Thomas came back when he was 17. She lived to be 83 years old, never knowing what happened to her other children. Most of what we know from her journey comes from her son, William. 